It's a new day for OP. I'm still wrapping up my time with the OnePlus 8. T, but along the way, OnePlus dropped off this new shiny, the Nord N10. So from the top of the year, from the 8 and 8 Pro to now, I think it's pretty clear that OnePlus has shifted to a different path than what this brand label used to walk. Starting off the review process here, instead of reading the specs off at you again, which I've never understood. I mean, if you found this video, I'm pretty sure you can find GSM Arena. <clears throat> I really like chatting smartphone philosophy, especially when I think it might lead to better competition. When it comes to OnePlus, Oppo, and the other BBK electronics brands, immediately I need to credit the amazing work done by Tech Alter. Some fantastic business insights on that YouTube channel, you should definitely be subscribed. Picking up the Nord N10, I get an immediate feeling that the OnePlus label no longer represents a singular phone brand. What started as an experiment to court tech enthusiasts has evolved into a more traditional consumer electronics option. If we're real tech fans, what we care about is more competition across the market. It feels good when a company sets their sights on us nerds, but we also have to know that no brand can live here. We nerds are insufferable when it comes to critiquing. We're also the most aggressive at shopping on sales or price reductions. We're not very valuable consumers. The N10 comes at a critical time for more mainstream consumers and joins a tier of phone that's really exciting for competition. The OP label used to be synonymous with a singular smartphone. You know, the old mission was to offer competitive performance at an attractive price, and every half year or so, that one phone would be refreshed with the current bits from the BBK parts bin. Now, the OnePlus label represents a spectrum of products at different price points. What we hope will continue, we hope, that the core DNA remains, where this company can aggressively price products against companies like Samsung and Apple for similar levels of performance. I think the N10 contributes to that idea really well. Z, I'm really tired of techies trying to be tastemakers or fashionistas. Here in North America, we haven't had as rich a collection of mid-ranger and entry-level phones as most other markets around the globe. And since the Pixel 3a, we've been watching this category explode. The 5G rollout in the USA has also been kind of a mess, but we're finally getting the options that will really boost 5G adoption. 5G isn't going to improve on the backs of $2,000 statement foldables. 5G is real when we can take it for granted that any new phone will have it. Some early conversations on the N10. This is not a phone for me. Hitting this low of a price point while introducing 5G and carrier support for North America means some compromises in a few areas. That's not rocket science. But I think OnePlus is doing a decent job of managing and balancing those compromises in a way where the consumer is most likely to shop a solution like this will enjoy the experience. That's such a huge change from years past. We used to talk about mid-rangers with that tone in our voice. Uh, consumers could suffer those compromises to save a little cash if that's what they wanted to do. We can now more comfortably make the argument that someone will just straight up enjoy using this phone first and foremost, and then they'll be tickled by the low price. That's just another perk. So let's be real in my first impressions. Not a lot of the nerdy bits matter, at least not in the traditional way we usually talk about phones. Processor, RAM, display tech, benchmarks, etc., etc. This is a device that continues to crack away at the terrible way we glorify premium tier expensive products, but then showcase those products for average consumers. Over the last couple years, I've really enjoyed using phones like this because they shake up that old flagship phone conversation. But a few early thoughts on using the phone, on handling the phone. It's definitely made to look good in photos. The glossy plastic looking like a shiny reflective glass, and it's a bit tacky. Tacky not in style, but in the literal feel. And that kind of grip on your fingertips. For all of those tech influencers who love to prattle on about, oh, it feels really nice in the hand. The material science conversation is kind of hilarious 
hilarious these days, where we've got glass that's finished to feel a little bit more like aluminum, and we've got plastic that's finished to look a little more like glass. The screen is solid. The faster refresh on the phone, it helps it feel a bit more responsive, but we're already on a chipset that's gonna be fine for daily driver use. And as an LCD, it's respectable. It's not as contrasty or as rich as a more expensive OLED, but you're only going to suffer that compromise if you're regularly holding it against another more expensive phone. I hope this is something that can be smoothed out with some software updates, but the rear-mounted fingerprint sensor is a little twitchy. I'm getting a few more missed registers on the uh, the Nord than on some of those other lower cost competitors. And I don't think it's gonna be controversial to say the haptics are weak. That buzzy, floppy buzz. Buzz. It's one of the things I absolutely love on the premium OnePlus is how the haptic motor now feels like a light string pluck. And you're not gonna get that here on the N10. Instead, there's just an idea of consumer grade represented here that I find a bit curious. Why is it that poor people phones get useful features like a headphone jack or memory card support? Why do we have this absurd bookend of phone features for handling real, real world use, these cheaper phones can often be better lifestyle communication companions for average consumers than their more expensive counterparts. Getting your money's worth on a premium tier processor means using your phone to replace your laptop, which is something tech influencers are often tripping over themselves to complain about my videos that average consumers don't use their phones like that. So the OnePlus Nord N10 arrives and it's not a phone for me, but I'm crazy excited it's here. This is a consumer win, having another option, a serious choice backed up by a large tech conglomerate to provide core lifestyle phone needs at competitive pricing. Now with a 5G twist, big screens, big cameras, big batteries, big storage with a memory card, headphone jacks, and little price tags. We're not missing anything here to complete the daily driver experience, and for a lot of folks, they'll probably like this better than some of the more expensive options out there. The OnePlus label now represents a collection of products. The brand has pivoted, selling different solutions in different regions to different consumers. We can draw some clearer inspiration from some of OnePlus's competitors, and it can be a little sad that a former enthusiast brand isn't what it used to be. But if it means getting better competition for everyone, I think that's a pretty good look. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to the channel. Stay tuned, because I still have to finish the OnePlus 8T, and I'm gonna have more to say about the Nord N10 along the way. Supporting your favorite content creators has never been more critical than it is today. So I greatly appreciate those of you who really do look down in the description for the links below. Maybe you shop some of my merch on that little ticker display from Teespring, or you could check out somegadgetguy.com and hit that support page to see a current list of all my affiliates and partners but of course, you might consider joining the list of names currently scrolling by from my Patreon, patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. It's basically a collection of the coolest people around the web, so I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet, at somegadgetguy on the Twitters and the Twitch, and the Facebooks and the Instagrams, and I will catch you all on the next video.